on this update it is october 9th uh, 9 a.m uh, dr melnick i see you are you ready to proceed we have um uh, actually counselor marshall is she not okay well let's go ahead with the introduction dr melnick if you can hear me okay I can hear you great. So, good morning. Uh, good morning. Counselors. Um, just a brief uh, update, a respiratory illness update, and then a preview of what we're going to be having for the next, uh, for the full Board of Health uh, meeting this month. So, uh, we're now entering respiratory illness season when we typically see an increase in cases of um, of RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, and influenza. And uh, of course, we still have COVID-19 circulating as well. COVID-19, unlike the other two, doesn't follow that seasonal pattern. Uh, we monitor COVID-19 activity throughout the year, but as we enter the respiratory illness season, we're going to be resuming our monitoring of influenza as well um, as RSV activity. So just, uh, uh, I don't have the, the, the link yet, but beginning this week, we're gonna be providing weekly respiratory illness updates on our social media and on our website. So our webs, our weekly updates uh, will we'll share data on Clark County emergency department visits and hospitalizations due to all three of those uh, uh, pathogens. Our infectious disease team will also be collecting lab results from local healthcare providers to monitor influenza test positivity. You might recall that when the percentage of tests or uh, influenza uh, go beyond, uh, percentage of positives go above 10%, 10 that's when we declare a uh, flu season. We're also gonna be monitoring influenza and COVID-19 deaths and those will be reported monthly on our website and on social media. We've also embedded on our website the respiratory illness dashboards from the State Department of Health, as well as links to state uh, data on virus activity and vaccination status. So I encourage the, uh, the Board of Health as well as the public uh, to check these out. In terms of current activity, so far, um, uh, um, influenza and RSV activity has been very low and not contributing to emergency department visits or hospitalizations. Emergency department visits and hospitalizations due to COVID-19 increased slowly through the, throughout the summer and in Clark County and across the state. And over the last month, the percentages have fluctuated locally. In the most recent week of data, September 22nd to 28th, Hospitalizations due to COVID-19 increased to 3.7%, which is slightly higher than this time last year, and 3.1% of emergency department visits were due to COVID-19, which is similar to this time last year. So that's where we're at. Um, in terms of respiratory illness, I just wanted a, uh, it's another respiratory illness um, uh, uh, that I wanted to talk about was whooping cough or pertussis. Uh, just really briefly, uh, this year we're seeing uh, a significant increase in whooping cough cases, and most of the cases are among people who are not vaccinated uh, for pertussis. And uh, the last I looked, it was about uh, two, uh, two thirds of the around two thirds of the cases had not received a vaccine ever. Through September, we've had 288 cases so far this year of whooping cough. That's more than the total number of cases we had in the last six years combined from 2018 to 2023. All those years, we had 283 cases. So far this year, we've had 288. And if I recall last year, we had about 14. Um, yeah, 14, I just verified it. Um, the number of cases had been increasing each month with the highest number in August when 69 cases were reported. In September, the number of cases decreased, but was still 50. That's still three and a half times more than all of 2023. Among the 288 cases so far this year, as I uh, mentioned, 64% uh, had never received a pertussis-containing vaccine, 
And then if you add the people who are not up to date on that, you're up to 67% of the cases. Fortunately, uh, there's only been one hospitalization and no deaths. So whooping cough vaccinations are recommended for all babies, children, preteens, and pregnant women, and adults who have never received a Tdap vaccine, which includes a pertussis, should get one. As you know, uh, pertussis can be very dangerous, especially in infants. So that's the uh, update. I just wanted to give you a preview of the next board of health meeting. We're going to be having a presentation from our infection prevention team about a recent pilot project they completed with the State Department of Health. During uh, COVID-19, our team identified a need for specialized training resources and tools for adult family homes. And as you know, adult family homes are basically long-term care settings uh, with uh, six residents or less. Um, and we have hundreds of them in Clark County. Uh, they're not considered healthcare facilities, but they are, um, uh, yeah, they are uh, residential care facilities. Um, most of the uh, long-term care guidance during COVID-19 was focused on skilled nursing facilities and assisted living facilities, but the patients or the residents of the adult family homes are very similar. They're just a smaller setting. So, in partnership with Department of Health and our infection uh, prevention team, they, they developed an epidemic preparedness tool for adult family homes that is now being rolled across the state. And you'll hear more about that. We're going to be telling you more about that project later this month. And we have over 400 adult family homes in Clark County. When you think there are six residents uh, uh, per adult family home, you're into the thousands of uh, 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 residents who, you know, are, are in long-term care. So it's a pretty significant uh, and vulnerable population that we want to protect. So that uh, we'll we'll fill you in on all that next uh, meeting. <clears throat> and that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Melnick. Do we have questions? Of yes, Dr. Sorry. Melnick. Please. Uh, would you remind everyone of the? Um, uh, the the frequency with which RSV vaccinations should be taken? Yeah, so um, in terms of uh, um, RSV vaccination, um, uh, let me get the notes on that for you. Um, uh, um, so RSV vaccine is a one-time uh, dosage. So, um, uh, once you have it, you don't need to get another one. And right now, it's um, right now it's recommended for people who are 75 years of age and older, and uh, people who are uh, between the ages of 60 to 74, who are at increased risk of severe R um, respiratory syncytial virus. So those would be people 60 to 74 who have chronic. Um, health conditions um, that um, uh, put them at risk. For example, if they're immunosuppressed, um, they should get the vaccine. And then it also, CDC also recommends RSV vaccine uh, uh, for women uh, between 32 and 36 weeks of pregnancy and the re uh, one dose of internal RSV vaccine, and that's to protect their babies after they're born. So, because it's a communicable disease. So, um, and then uh, for infants, um, there's a mono, monoclonal antibodies. Um, uh, so it's a passive vaccination that's recommended uh, uh, based on their age, uh, um, whether their mother was vaccinated and their risk for severe illness. So I'm, I won't get into details on that, but that's basically it. Thank you. Does that help? Yes, it does. And I, I think that's a good reminder that getting that just one time, you're covered. Yes. Additional questions by council. Michelle, uh, did you have anything? Okay, well, thank you for the update, uh, Dr. Milnick. I would just say personally, these are to some extent outside those school uh, prescribed um vaccines you know it i get every every shot i can at every opportunity and 
knock on wood, I haven't been very sick. I can't remember the last time I had an, an awful flu. Uh, and as a child, I had pretty much everything before these vaccines were rolled out, <laughs> including measles, which I think was the among the sickest I've ever been. Um, so it's a personal choice in most instances, and, and certainly people should look for the best health care information they can from their own uh, care provider, uh, as well as your uh, web page that you provide information. So thank you. And I did get my recent shot for the flu with the super dose for us older folks. Um, and it didn't hurt and I didn't get sick. And hopefully uh, I'll smooth through this year without being bedridden. Anything further by any counselor? Okay, thank you, Dr. Melnick.